Hi guys, I hope you are all doing well. Let's see today's question. So today's question, we are taking it up from the topic of probability. And we are continuing our series of questions on JEE Advanced. So continuing this series, we are taking up our question today from this topic. And the question, if you see, it tells us of the three independent events, even E2 and E3, so even E2, E3 are your three independent events. And with this independent events, we have been told probability that only even occurs. So probability only even occurs is alpha. Probability that only E2 occurs is beta. And probability of only E3 occurs is gamma. So this is given to us and they have also told us probability P is such that none of the three events occurs. So none of the events, even E2, E3 occurs there. We have been given two conditions also that this probability is satisfied. One condition is alpha minus 2 beta into P is equal to alpha into beta. And the second condition is given to us that says beta minus 3 gamma into p is equal to 2 beta gamma. So these are the two conditions also which get satisfied. We have been told that the probabilities lie in the interval from 0 to 1. So we already know that probabilities always lie in the limit from 0 to 1. We have been asked the question that is probability of occurrence of even and ratio of the probability of occurrence of E3. So that is the ratio which is asked to us. And we have been told or we have been given four options that say A is 2, B is 3, C is 5, D is 6. We need to figure out which one of the four options is the correct ratio given to us. So let's take an example. Let's say probability of occurrence of E1, if I keep it as X, probability of occurrence of E2 is, let's say, Y, and probability of occurrence of E3 is Z. Now, we have been told that even E2 and E3 are independent. So, probability of all the three occurring simultaneously is nothing but what we can just multiply the individual probabilities since these are your independent events. So whichever condition we need to find out, we can just multiply the individual probabilities. Like in this case, probability of all the three happening simultaneously is x into y into z. Now let's talk about the cases which have been given to us. Probability that only even occurs. Okay, let's see is alpha. So probability of only even occurring is given to as an alpha. Even occurs means you will have only even event happening. So even. Then E2 event won't happen. So it becomes 1 minus y because probability of only even means even should occur. Probability of E2 not occurring and probability of E3 not occurring. Now we already know that total probability is 1. So probability of E2 occurring plus probability of that same event not happening is 1. So probability of E2 occurring gives you 1 minus probability of E2. So if you see that, now you get here. 1 minus y. So that's why I wrote probability of E2 not occurring is 1 minus y. 
probability of e3 not occurring is 1 minus z that is equal so this is one condition we had let's see the next condition we have been told that probability of only e2 event happening is e2. so that tells us when e2 is happening e1 and e3 will not occur right so even not occurring even not occurring means 1 minus x e2 only occurring y e3 not occurring 1 minus z that is equal to so second equation third equation if you want to figure out probability of only e3 occurring that is even versus gamma so only e3 means e1 and e2 will not occur now even not occurring 1 minus x E2 not occurring 1 minus y, E3 occurring z. This is equal to gamma. So we have these three conditions. So, so 1, 2, and 3. We have been also told that P is such a probability that none of the three events occurs. Means E1 will not occur. 1 minus x, e2 also will not occur, 1 minus y, e3 will also not occur, 1 minus y. So that is given to us. Equation. Now let's try to solve the question here. So before solving, if I take the ratio of 4 by 1, I can directly cancel 1 minus y and 1 minus z, and I can get the ratio of 1 minus x by x. So, in dividing 4 by 1, you get 1 minus x, 1 minus y, 1 minus z is equal to p. And here you have x, 1 minus y, 1 minus z. Now, you can cancel out this as well. So, you get 1 minus x upon x is equal to p upon If I divide 4 with 2, let's see what I get. So for that I get 1 minus x, 1 minus y, 1 minus z divided by get y, 1 minus x, minus z is equal to p upon beta. So again, you can cancel this also, get 1 minus y upon y is equal And if I divide 4 by 3, you have again 1 minus x, 1 minus y, 1 minus z. 1 minus x, 1 minus y, z is equal to p. So again, you can cancel out 1 minus y and 1 minus x. So you get 1 minus x. Now let's try to figure out what is the question asking us. So question is asking probability of occurrence of E1 on probability of occurrence of T. That is, we have kept this as X. This is Z. So we need to find X upon Z. Okay. So let's figure out X upon Z here. So if I want to figure out X here, I can solve this equation. So this gives me alpha 1 minus X is equal to P x so you get here alpha minus alpha x is equal to p x so alpha becomes alpha x plus p x here if i take x common you get alpha plus p taking that in the denominator gives you alpha upon alpha plus p is equal to x now if you see same all the ratios are in the same pattern so you can just write that here you will get beta upon beta plus p is equal to y from this and here you get z is equal to gamma upon gamma so if you see here i can resubstitute x as alpha upon alpha plus p z as gamma upon gamma plus p so if you write this becomes 1 upon this I can write as alpha plus p upon alpha 
the whole thing 1 upon gamma plus p upon gamma. So if you take the denominator separately, you get 1 upon 1 plus p by alpha. Here you get 1 upon 1 plus p by gamma. So that p 1 plus p by gamma is in the denominator of the denominator that comes directly in the denominator. So p upon e1 upon p of e3 is equal to 1 plus p by gamma on 1 plus p by gamma. So that's the whole ratio we are getting from. Now let's try to figure out p by alpha and p by gamma and then we'll get the value of the question which is asked to us. So let's figure out that. We have been given two conditions. Alpha minus 2 beta into P is equal to alpha beta and beta minus 3 gamma P is equal to 2 beta gamma. If I write those two conditions that are given to us, the first condition we have been given is alpha minus 2 beta into P is equal to alpha beta. And the second condition given to us is beta minus 3 gamma P is equal to now what I can do here is, I can see that probability of the question which is asked to us involves P, Alpha and Gamma. So it involves P, Alpha and Gamma. So we need to convert our two equations in terms of P, Alpha and Gamma. So we need to eliminate Beta. So let's eliminate Beta from everywhere. We need to eliminate Beta from everywhere. So if I figure out here, I can write this P as alpha beta upon alpha minus 2 beta. From here, I can get P as 2 beta gamma upon beta minus. Now, if I see left hand sides are equal, so I can just equate the right hand side so that I can eliminate beta. Alpha beta upon alpha minus 2 beta is equal to. 2 beta gamma upon beta minus. So what you get here, you can cancel out beta beta. Now if you try to solve this, you get this as alpha beta minus 3 alpha gamma is equal to 2 alpha gamma minus 4 beta. So if you figure out this, you get this as 5 alpha gamma alpha beta plus 4 beta gamma. Beta common alpha plus 4 gamma is equal to 5 alpha. So you get from here beta is 5 alpha gamma on alpha plus 4. Once you have the value of beta here, we know that we need to eliminate beta from this as well as this expression. So you can substitute beta. So I'll substitute in the next step beta as this in this equation. So I'll substitute beta here as well as here. So let's see how do I solve this. We get alpha minus 2. This 5 alpha gamma. is equal to alpha into beta. So you get alpha into pi alpha gamma upon alpha plus. So now if I try to solve this further, cross multiplying alpha, alpha plus 4 gamma minus 10, alpha gamma upon alpha plus 4 gamma into p gives me 5 alpha square gamma upon alpha. So I can see this denominator same on both sides. I can directly cancel that. I can also take alpha common from the left hand side. So alpha common gives you alpha plus 4 gamma minus 10 gamma into p is equal to 5 alpha square gamma. So alpha alpha also I can cancel from both sides. 1 alpha gone from here as well as here. Now if I try to solve this, you get alpha p minus, this becomes 6 gamma, so 6 gamma p 
is equal to 5 alpha gamma. Now, once I take 6 gamma p on the other side, becomes alpha p is equal to 5 alpha gamma plus 6 gamma p. Now, when there is 5 alpha gamma and when there is 6 gamma p, if I want to make both of them same on the right hand side, I should add 1 alpha gamma here, so it also becomes 6 alpha. So, once I'm adding alpha gamma here, I can also add 1 alpha gamma here. So, now you have on the left alpha p plus alpha gamma. I can take out alpha part common, you have p plus gamma. Here I can do 6 alpha gamma plus 6 gamma p. So 6 and gamma comes out, you get alpha plus p. If you try to solve this, you get gamma plus p upon gamma is equal to 6 alpha plus p upon gamma. So if you now try to solve this, separating the denominators, you get 1 plus p by gamma is equal to 6 times 1 plus p by alpha. If you take the ratio, you get 1 plus p by gamma upon 1 plus p by alpha dot gamma. Here you have gamma. So 1 plus p by gamma upon 1 plus p by alpha is equal to 6. So the ratio becomes 6. So if you see the answer of the probability which was asked to us is the same thing. So 1 plus p by alpha upon 1 plus p by gamma we got that as 6. So answer for the question that is asked to us that the ratio of probabilities is 6 and if you see the option that matches here is D. So D is the correct answer for the given question. I hope you have understood how to solve these types of questions. So first we took some X, Y, Z as three probabilities of events E1, E2, E3. Then using the idea of independent events, we just figured out alpha, beta and gamma in terms of the probabilities given as well as P. Took the ratio, we got X in terms of alpha and P, Y in terms of beta and P, Z in terms of gamma and P. Then we used the two equations to figure out the probabilities of E1 and E3 that came out X by Z. And that finally gave us 1 plus p by alpha upon 1 plus p, 1 plus p by gamma upon 1 plus p by alpha. Then we figured out the two equations given to us. We tried to eliminate beta by putting beta as 5 alpha gamma upon alpha plus 4 gamma. Once that we did, we just solved that and we got the answer for the question. That was 6. I'll meet you again tomorrow with some other question from some other topic. If you are enjoying this series, if you are liking the questions, please do like, share and subscribe to my channel. Also, do share these videos with your friends who are also involved in the preparation of JEE. Thank you.